G'day YouTube, Warbles on a lot here with a poem called Indigenous Man. It's number 24 in the Warbles in the Wilderness series and it's an entry for at Laura Leela's E-Quality Art Competition. I wrote it by request. Back in 1996, December, I'd published a book of poetry. This is not in the book. In the book there are three massacre poems. A didgeridoo carver who'd come along with me to authenticate some carved trees and a carved stone that I'd found. We'd gone to school together but you know we became closer friends as a result of the book. He was fighting with his wife and I was fighting with my wife and we met up with each other in the main street and he wanted me to go with him and help get drunk down by the Park Creek and he already had his flag and a booze and I said well that might be how you're fighting with your wife but the way I got to fight with my wife is go down to the next town and talk to a solicitor so I'll catch you later and as I left he said hey brother write a poem about me eh and it kind of bothered me so that night I actually did I wrote the poem and I typed it out and the next day when I was at court expecting to tussle with my wife there's my mate. And he was chained hand and foot, shackled. Handcuffs chained to his leg cuffs. With a policeman beside him carrying a gun. Because that's what happens when Aborigines drink. Publicly in daylight beside the Park Creek. So I was able to give him the poem. And here it is, it's called Indigenous Man. So my brother, you want a poem about you? Well, I can do it, man, but it'll have to be true. I remember you from back when we was just kids, before dollars was invented, back when money was quids. My old man was the driver of the Farrakhabad bus, the year they voted you be counted in the government census. I remember when your folks, in sober silence dignified, stayed connected to their culture when the booze was just denied. But the genocidal blow at your generation that was struck. Citizenship meant right to drink. Keep your culture. Lots of luck. For when you're living in the remnants of a war-ravaged land, then diving deep in bottled oblivion, the sensation's bloody grand. Then you cannot feel the scorn. Those pious looks will bounce right off. But you always want another. Because drinkers can never sink enough. And when you blotto in the gutter, drunk and really on the skids, then you can't showcase your culture, neither teach it to your kids. But when you're sober, you can do it. Teach kids to walk about free. For we've together seen their tracks carved on rock and in a tree. The olden ways have lingered here and there, somewhat longer, and they haven't disappeared while you and I are still to ponder at the nature of this land, the Creator's plan and how it's grand. Though we all can see the crushing cities squatting on the coastal sand, tis plain they'll go away, swept by history's omnipotent tide. So take it easy, my old friend, at drinking liquid genocide. Indigenous Man, written in December 1996. <sighs> Interesting when you compare it to the last week's news, isn't it? Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Ciao.